Ahoy! I see there's a lot of confusion about the way scores in mission wars are calculated. The other day, for example, there was a conversation in the chat that went like this, but there were countless others I forgot to take screenshots of. So let me make those things clear. There is a slight difference between the old type of war, also known as TG, and the new one that's known as MC. However, MC only has additional ways to gain scores, so everything that you can do in TG, you can also do, do there too, so that's where I'll be demonstrating. Let's have a look at a recent score screen, because that basically tells you everything about it, but I'll try to go into more detail. So first of all, occupied HQ means taking the points that we call bases. Both nations start with a base, the big one with the walls and plenty of tower building spots. Taking that gives your nation 5000 points, which is quite a lot, but that's quite obvious. Occupied fortress means the smaller points, the ones named after the general directions like north, east, south and west, and there's alpha, omega and center. There are small points that are worth 1000 points, medium that are worth 2000 and large for 3000 points each. Every time you occupy one of them, your nation receives that amount to their score. And there's a message in the system window about that too. Now remember that fortresses start off as neutral. That means if, let's say, my nation occupies a large one for 3k points at the beginning of the war, we will have 8k points. But if the enemy captures it back, we will keep the 3000 points for taking it first, and they gain 3000 too while it belongs to them. So the points will be equal, but it will belong to the enemy. And that is a good thing, because we will have the option to take it back, but they won't. So if we take all the neutral green points on the map first, then the enemy captures everything and we only have one base left, we might still have the lead at the end of the game, while the whole map is red. That is why it's possible to win with almost the whole map belonging to the other nation and possible to lose even if we take almost everything. That's why taking as many green points as we can is the best strategy to win. Because if the enemy takes everything back, we'll be at equal score and we'll have all the map to choose from when occupying something while they all have to focus on a few bases that may be well defended. Defeating enemies basically means killing other players. For every kill, your nation gets 10 points. I know that's not much, considering that you'd have to kill 100 enemies to make up for one small base, but the whole thing is based on PvP, so if there are 50 plus people in a war, there will inevitably be some great battles with lots of casualties. Also, by defeating opponents you delay them from taking bases or making score in other ways, so it is significant. Destroying four towers is the one that just about everyone in my nation appears to overlook. For example, every HQ base has a resurrection and a warp tower at the beginning of the game. Destroying either of those gives you 500 points, so compared to the 5000 we get for taking the base, we'd get 1000 more just for those two towers. That's why every time I enter a base I go straight for the towers. They have not even half as much HP as a small legacy guardian, and it takes no time for two or three people to destroy one to get a bunch of score. You can actually see we lost this war because our enemies took the effort to destroy towers and gain 5000 extra points. When occupying a base you inevitably destroy a legacy guardian too in most cases. A small guard is worth 100, a medium is 300 and a large is 500 points. So when you take a base you get that as a gift basically. Now there is a common misconception that if you build the guardians using your own odds instead of the nation's points there won't be any bonus score for destroying it, but that's not true. The only difference that makes is that you get to keep more construction points. In the top right corner there is a number marked with a P. Those are the points you can use to build towers and legacy guardians, and they are in no way associated with the nation's score that determines victory. Your nation's score will not be lowered when you build a tower or guardian with points. Anyway, let's go to the next one. Left force tower means that every tower that is still standing gives your nation some more points. So, if you destroy a tower, you not only get your nation points, but you also decrease the points of your enemies. I hope you now see how important it is to take out the towers first when you enter a base. But that also means that if your nation has lots of construction points to spend, 
and there's a safe place surrounded with walls that's not going to be invaded in the last 5 minutes, you can build it full of towers and get some points for doing so, as long as they aren't destroyed. Towers automatically disappear when the base is occupied and that means the points for left force tower are awarded but the points for destroying those towers will be lost forever. Now the things about gold coins are only applied to MC. Gold coin production is related to occupied HQ and fortresses. Every once in a while you see the message in the system window that this and that base produced that much coins. Every base your nation owns produces coins every few minutes. So the more blue there is on the map the more score you gain over time. That's one more reason why taking green points at the beginning of the war is important, but that also means the same thing doesn't entirely apply to MC as it did to TG. If a nation takes almost the whole map at the beginning, then the other nation takes them back, they might still take the lead through gold coin production over time. Gold coin deposit is when you get rid of those coins you can loot. Every time a neutral coin guardian is killed it drops 5 coins that the player who delivered the last hit can pick up. Also every time you defeat an enemy player they drop half of their coins plus 1. So for example if I have 10 coins in my inventory and someone kills me I will drop 5 plus 1 meaning 6 coins and I will have 4 left on me. However that also means that if you kill someone who has 0 coins he will still drop 1. So make sure you deposit your gold before joining a fight or you might lose it. To deposit the coins you must visit those big ass machines in any allied base. For every coin you get 4 personal points and your nation gets 40 points. So if you manage to kill a coin guardian and take his gold to your base you will have gained 20 points for yourself and 200 for your nation which is not bad. And finally defeating neutral monsters means those coin guardians. Not only do they drop coins when killed but they also give your nation points. So before you blame the double guardian farmers for losing the war think about that. You can see that around 10% of the entire score of the nation is from those players who farm those guardians. Of course if they all focused on occupying fortresses it would definitely be worth more but still they aren't useless like many people believe. So that's about it. I hope this will help clear a lot of misunderstanding about points in wars. As usual if there's anything unclear or anything I forgot to talk about feel free to ask me in the comments.